We'll call the meeting to order. Note the uh, notice is appropriate, and there is a quorum present. We'll ask the Commission Secretary, Ms. Mitchell, to present today's agendas. Thank you, Commissioners. Good morning. On the agenda for Thursday, February 27th, 2020, submitted for your vote are the following proposed orders. There are 57 CDs affecting 62 causes. Do need to note that there are two orders that are mistitled, CD 2018-3228 and CD 2018-9523. Those are both order dismissing causes. And we would request that one be stricken, uh, CD 2019-5695. It was returned to technical because it had not been reviewed by them, and after further review, they had corrections. And we also have four enforcements. Thank you, Peggy. Questions or comments on today's daily agenda? Seeing none, uh, considering the daily agenda minus 2019-5695, which has been stricken, I vote aye. 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 This is to the Let's see. I I can't remember. Do we do we adjourn the meeting before we go into the No. No, we're doing the rule making as part of it, so we'll just keep going. Keep going. All right, Kyle, tell us about the rules. Good morning, Commissioners. Kyle Vasquez on behalf of the Public Utility Division. Uh, we're here uh, today, this morning, for a public hearing for the Chapter 35 rulemaking. I want to thank you, Commissioners, for being present today. To provide you a little background, the proposal discussed today is identical to the version adopted by the Commission as emergency rules last fall. This current rulemaking process simply makes those rules permanent. Uh, a notice for proposed rulemaking was filed for this rulemaking, which is RM 2020-00001. It was filed on January 14, 2020, along with a copy of the proposed rules. On January 30, 2020, a rule impact statement was filed and provided via gov delivery to all interested parties. And a technical conference was held last week on February 20th. PUD received no written or oral public comments regarding the proposed rules. As a reminder, the industry and stakeholders worked with PUD in a robust rulemaking process last fall to draft the previously adopted emergency rules. And as stated earlier, PUD now desires to adopt those rules as permanent pursuant to the OAR process. I'd be happy to answer any questions from the commissioners, if any. And if not, I have a motion uh, prepared for uh, proposal. Could you just give us just uh, kind of a a uh, highlight summary of what the rules really do? Uh, yes, these emergency rules were adopted uh, because the uh, passage of uh, House Bill uh, last fall and the changes here deal with the wind energy areas. Uh, specifically, uh, it addresses uh, things like the definition of po uh, project boundary. It talks about uh, how to file notice of intent uh, related to uh, some FAA requirements, specifically the Form 7460. It also uh, discusses um, notice that needs to be given uh, to the Aeronautics Commission, uh, also to the Federal Clearinghouse and to the PUD. Um, so those are kind of the, you know, the highlights of what this does. Like I said, these rules were all um, uh, worked on with industry stakeholders uh, through a technical conference and meetings uh, last fall, and it was an emergency because of the passage of that uh, House bill, and that's why we had to get that passed. And it's been working, I, I believe, pretty well since then, uh, which is why I've not heard any public comment uh, from anybody or written comment uh, asking any changes or anything at this time. Um, as you know, pursuant to the OAR process, uh, rules that are adopted on an emergency basis do need to go through the official rulemaking process to be made permanent, otherwise they'll revert back to the previous rules. And that was the sole purpose of this rulemaking at this time, is to take the rules that have already been adopted on this emergency basis and adopt them wholeheartedly as permanent. Okay, and the $1,500 um, per day uh, fine, I guess, or for violations of that, that would be would somebody from the public utility division or how would that work? I mean, does it go to an enforcement case or how, how do we get to the place where it's the $1,500 fine per day? I mean, what would be the process here at the OCC? I see what is for this violation, you pay this, but how would that work internally here? 
hopefully it wouldn't actually get to that point. Uh, but but if it did, yes, PUD could file an enforcement action, um, and then we could go through the normal enforcement hearing process if we needed to go uh, forward at that point. Um, Okay, it doesn't really say that in our rules, but you would say it would move towards how we deal with other enforcement things in PUD? That, that is correct. Okay, that might be a point to think about in the future for clarification, but you can't read from the rules what really is supposed to happen. So okay. thank you. Thank you. So as uh, legislation and other things have uh, moved forward in Oklahoma, we've uh, had lots of different aspects of wind development uh, come to our attention. One was siting. Yes, sir. Uh, could you review with us what you think the responsibility or involvement of the commission is in siting, and is any of that uh, addressed whatsoever by this rule? Uh, this rule does not affect siting. Traditionally, the commission does not have oversight. Oversighting, that is a, a business decision. However, we do want there to be notice of where siting is going to happen. So as far as siting goes, uh, it's my understanding that uh, the wind developer submits kind of a plan of a general area or, or a boundary, and that's part of what this rule talks about. It talks about here's here's a boundary. So for example, you know, it might be a quarter section out in the middle of Weatherford or or something like that. And then what would happen is uh, they would su submit that area f uh, for study, and part of the notification process is. Um, talking to us, the Aeronautics Commission, they file this uh, Form 7460 with the FAA, and that has to do with the height of the uh, wind turbines. And then this information also goes from the Aeronautics Commission to the uh, Oklahoma uh, Military Command and the Federal Clearinghouse, uh, because one of the issues uh, that was brought up during this uh, rulemaking process during the, mission, during the emergency uh, portion was in Oklahoma, as you know, we are a very big uh, military state, especially with the Air Force and the training corridors. We have the training base up at... Uh, Vance Air Force Base in Enid. We also have um, our bases uh, down in Altus and, of course, Tinker here in uh, Oklahoma City. And in these wide open uh, spaces, uh, they're used for training our pilots, and we didn't want to have any of these um, turbines going up in an area that could make the airspace uh, unsafe, which is why the FAA has gotten involved with these, these Form 7460 to make sure that the turbines will, in fact, not interfere with any of these uh, training routes. Thank you. Uh, with that, your, uh, commissioners, I would ask the commission to make a motion to adopt the rules as filed on January 14th, 2020, incorporating into the record and the ensuing uh, rule document all documents filed with the court clerk regarding this rulemaking. I further ask that the commission allow me to make any changes necessary to be compliant with the requirements of the Office of Administrative Rules. All right, considering the motion that Kyle has stated, I would move adoption and vote aye. 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 Motion passes. There be any new business to come before the meeting? Seeing none, the meeting's adjourned. Very good. Eric, Eric you just barely made it in time. <laughs>